real estate right away. I mean, it was the first time in my adult life I saw a correlation between the work I put into something and the pay I received. And it was just so invigorating. Hello and welcome to episode 183 of the Smart Agents Podcast. As always, my name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. On today's episode, we're joined by Milwaukee-based real estate professional, Justin Ipoletti. Now 12 years into his real estate career, Justin didn't initially break into the industry with a full career in mind. As an educator in the public school system, Justin was looking for ways to increase his income. Two years later, Justin dove in full time. Throughout our conversation, Justin shares how he launched his real estate career, how his marketing techniques have evolved over the years, and tips for new real estate agents trying to break into the industry. But before we get on to the day's featured interview, the Smart Agents magazine is available and is full of insights and strategies designed to help real estate agents grow their businesses. Inside, you will find interviews and advice from leading real estate professionals, marketing tips to flood your business with leads, and even swipe and deploy files full of practical tools to enhance your business. Subscribe now to receive your copy of the printed magazine each month and instantly get access to our online agent community and members-only templates. Click the link in the episode description or go to smartagents.com forward slash magazine. Also, if you enjoyed this conversation, be sure to like and subscribe. The Smart Agents podcast streams on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon Music. And finally, if you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new stories to share. All right, let's get on to the day's featured interview with Justin Ipoletti. I really enjoyed our conversation and hope you do as well. Really, the way I like to start everything out is if you could just introduce yourself to us a little bit, who you are and where you're at in the country. Excellent. I'm uh, Justin Ipoletti. I work for a local independent brokerage in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, Shore West Realtors. I've been a realtor for uh, coming up on 12 years now and yeah, keeping at it every day. Awesome. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about um, what got you into real estate. I understand that you were uh, in the public teaching space before that. Yeah. Um, I, after about eight years of uh, uh, post-secondary education, uh, was kind of looking for my path and to start, you know, earning income and uh, coming back to Wisconsin. I was out of the state for about eight years, you know, going to school and ready to come back home. And uh Teaching was a great path for me to be able to come home and start working. Um, coming to cities like Milwaukee, there's a lot of programs looking to improve public education in a lot of the major cities around the country, and Milwaukee was definitely one of them. And I was able to use a lot of the good uh, education I, I received to present myself as you know a candidate to work for a program. Uh, new teacher, new teacher project was the program I came into. Um, and it was a great experience, uh, really uh, allowed me to embrace the city and uh, hone a lot of skills that I, I didn't even know needed <laughs> honing. Um, but, um, you know, probably after a few years of doing that, it, it was a changing time in uh, public education in Milwaukee. Um, you know, they were trying to really get a lot of budget stuff under control. And mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately that meant, you know, uh, pay freezes for a few years, um, a lot of increased benefits contributions, and then coming in as an initial educator where salaries are definitely on the lower side of things. I was having a hard time paying back student loans, just, you know, saving anything. So real estate for me was just what can I do to supplement my income? You know, is there something out there where I can be a teacher and still make some extra money on the side to try to get ahead a little bit? Um, I, I never saw real estate initially as, you know, a life changing experience or something that would really just dramatically alter my path. But it, you know, sometimes the best things we, you know, go through are kind of happenstance, you know, when we least expect. Right. Absolutely. So uh, before we get into the real estate, what grade level were you teaching? What, what were you teaching? I, uh, for seven years, was in a high school um, self-contained classroom for uh, students with emotional behavioral disabilities mm -hmm. in the inner city of Milwaukee. Oh, wow. Yeah. So definitely, uh, you know, I can, I can understand how, you know, some of the skills that you honed in that situation has helped even in your real estate career with, you know, some of the high pressure uh, things going on. Yeah. I mean, and just patience and, uh, you know, things as a young person going into that field, 
uh, I, I, I definitely needed that time. And, uh, you know, I use every day in real estate practice now. Right. Absolutely. So, uh, when you got into real estate was, and you said it was something that you were wanting to supplement. So it was not something that you jumped in full, full time right away. No, I remember meeting with, uh, the first interview I had, um, with a sales director, I said, Hey, I'm a teacher. I'm going to stay being a teacher. Is this something I can do summers, nights, weekends to supplement what I'm committed to doing with my full-time job? And, uh, you know, he said, son, I have, uh, you know, salespeople here that make more in one summer than you do in two years of teaching. And I'm like, <laughs> how quickly can I sign up? Where do I go? <laughs> you know? And, uh, so yeah, I, I never saw it being a full-time career starting out. Yeah. So when did you, uh, did you start out doing both? Were you teaching and doing real estate at the same time? So for about two and a half years, I did do both mm-hmm. and, you know, it, real estate, Right away. I mean, it was the first time in my adult life I saw a correlation between the work I put into something and the pay I received. And it was just so invigorating and exciting. And uh, every free moment I had, I just poured myself into real estate practice. Um, and I, I remember at the, the time, you know, my wife saying, you know, don't think this is going to be, you know, your full time. You're, you're going to keep, I'm like, of course I'm going to keep teaching, you know, but, you know, after, you know, a good first year, getting into the second year and things are really taking off. And so I'm really going, I don't know, <laughs> this <laughs> kind of may be a full-time career. And I remember going to her then, you know, kind of in that second full year of real estate and said, you know, I think this might be my future, my path. And she said, yeah, of course, you know, you're doing great, do it, you know? And I was like, whoa, all right. And that was really my affirmation. Like, okay, I, this really is legit. This is me. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, once you definitely start uh, kind of running those numbers and you see the time that you're putting in and the time that you could be putting in, if you were full time, yeah. I can definitely see how the eyes get a little big and say, we got to, we got to jump. And, and, you know, as, as much good as you can do in, you know, public jobs like teaching, you know, I'd be there at, you know, seven, eight o'clock at night, you know, and, you know, an administrator would walk by like, why are you still here? You know, I'm like, I'm trying to do my job really well. And they're like, no, go home. And like, what are you doing? And so you could be there a hundred hours a week and still get the same compensation, the same appreciation. And it's hard to, you know, over the long term, I, I think, you know, keep that going. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, a lot of the people that I talk to that have gone from a, a public, public service world to uh, real estate and sales. That's a pretty common theme of just, you know, not getting the uh, the benefit of all the time and everything that you put in and sacrifice, you know, yeah. in those jobs. And God bless the people who do make that sacrifice for 30 years, you know, because right. it's not easy. Yeah, absolutely. So when, uh, as you were starting out in your real estate career, how did you, uh, what were you doing to market yourself and to let people know that, this is something that I was, you know, I was also doing. I think, you know, the thing about being successful in any sales oriented field, you have to be so unapologetic about, you know, what you're doing and, you know, being in a bigger local company like Shore West for 12 years now, I see a lot of new people come in, you know, bright eyed, excited. And, and, go, and I, I think one of the big common denominators is, you know, passionately reaching out to people and, you know, I was so excited day one, you know, anyone who even halfway knew my name was hearing about real estate and what, you know, I was doing. And the benefit of being in a big public school system is I have a lot of young adults who have varying housing needs all around me. Uh, Even a staff at my school of probably 60 to 70, you know, adults that, you know, (laughs) either (laughs) needed or didn't know they need a place to live. And, uh, you know, I got a lot of early business just in those circles and really hitting hitting it hard. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I definitely can see how, uh, you know, the staff there and those are people that you're with all the time and you're all working, time. you know, you're getting to know them so well. Um, and then, you know, you do talk about what you guys are doing outside of the, the school. And if they hear yeah. that you're, you know, doing this real estate, I, I definitely see how that can turn into business. And you're right. There are a lot of adults that are in that profession that, you know, they eventually have families of their own and, and yeah. you know, needs change. Yeah. Young people starting out, you know, 23, 24. And, you know, as they're there for a few years, life starts changing a lot. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and 
is I, I'm assuming that you, you know, cause you've kind of alluded to it that you've been with the same real estate company this whole time as well. I have, um, you know, uh, I started out, you know, literally without two nickels to rub together and, uh, you know, always just had a really strong impression of, um, Shore West as a company in the market, you know, just growing up in Wisconsin and seeing the signs around everywhere. And, uh, um, it's just so neat to work with a company that has a thousand employees, but I can, you know, go to Brookfield and walk in the president's door and, you know, say, Hey, you know, what about this? And he knows me and will talk to me. And you can't do that with a lot of companies, especially bigger companies. So I, I really love the local family. Uh, I, I've never had a you know desire, you know, um, and there's a lot of opportunity in this world, a lot of emerging companies and, you know, uh, I, I'm very, very happy where I'm at. Yeah, absolutely. And so, uh, you said it was, you know, growing up in Wisconsin, it was a, a name and a brand that you recognize. So was that a big part of, you know, choosing to go work there right out of the gate when you were looking to get started? Yeah. Even, you know, not really knowing a lot about real estate itself, you know, that was just kind of my impression as a consumer. Um, and I remember I made a social media post, you know, right when I first met with a sales director, I said, I'm going to work with the Yankees of real estate. No offense to your Orioles. <laughs> but um, but I, that was my impression that they were like the go-to place. And uh, certainly, you know, you learn a lot behind the scenes, but uh, you know, my strong impression and appreciation of the company has not changed even with experience. Right. Absolutely. So when you started, uh, did you have, you know, a, a mentor that really kind of helped, you know, get you on the, in the right path to, you know, you know, finding those people within your sphere that were looking to, uh, yeah, you know, and that's so, uh, I mean, you look back on it and, you know, I, you know, you have all the passion and energy, but zero knowledge and, you know, real estate is such a knowledge driven field. So, I mean, probably for the first couple of years, you're doing a lot of faking it till you make it, you know, and, but you can't do that without educated and supportive people behind you. And, uh, um, my sales director at my office, um, who's, you know, still here, uh, I, Tina Blocka, she's been just an amazing support through the ups and the downs and the all arounds. And, you know, I, I think probably for my first 20 deals I did, you know, she nonstop answered questions I had. And, you know, <laughs> when you're, you know, so excited, you know, you have so many questions and, you know, you can imagine from the other end that gets old pretty quick, but, you know, people like her kind of, you know, stick it out and, you know, have always been in my corner. So I'm very fortunate for the support I've had to get to where I am today. Right. So moving on to when you, uh, once you went full time, uh, have you, what's been kind of your, your marketing method? Has, did it evolve, you know, once that when you went full time, did you start doing more outside marketing or was it still really cultivating that sphere of influence? Yeah, you know, and real estate's changed so much in even the last 10, 12 years. Uh, you know, when I started out, it was definitely still a pretty strong buyer's market. Um, so I hit the buyer side really hard, probably for my first three or four years, 90% of my deals were buyer side transactions. And it was great for that market. Um I feel bad for a lot of newer agents now in a very different market because it's hard to hit that buyer side hard when you start out because buyer side deals are really hard to come by now. But thankfully, you know, I'm established now where probably is getting to the other side of the spectrum where I'm probably 60, 70% listing side transactions now. And that's the market we're in. So I, I, I've definitely, any business practitioner has to evolve with changes in the marketplace, but certainly no matter what, that evolution is it's always, you know, spear based and client based and, you know, hitting the connections with people, you know, and that's what I think separates uh, real estate sales from selling encyclopedias or, you know, doing anything like that is you're trying to cram a product down people's throat. And, you know, with real estate, you're reaching a core need that people have and that they want to do. And you're just kind of keeping those important connections with people who want to utilize your services. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's what's so great about the real estate industry is that you really can, uh, you know, you can connect, you can create, you know, lifetime long connections, you know, with uh, the clients that you serve. For sure. And, you know, you work with the same people multiple times and their family members and friends. And I mean, that just sphere of influence grows so wide if you nurture it properly. And that's where a lot of people fall short, too, is you have to put a lot of time and effort into nurturing those relationships. Yeah. So, you know, for you specific, specifically, what do you do uh, to nurture those relationships? You know, I, I try to never let 
you know, more than a month or two go by where I don't have some kind of touch with, with, with people. Cause you know, people make decisions so quickly in this world. And, uh, so, um, using good systems of mailing, uh, you know, I do a lot with, you know, brewer schedules, packer schedules. Uh, I do a Christmas card with Starbucks inserts, um, you know, and then I, I do a lot with, uh, you know, the just sold, just listed postcards, you know, just giving people a tangible, uh, message of success in certain neighborhoods. And those are great listing appointments. And, you know, when they say, Hey, you saw, you sold John's house across the street. If you can sell John's house, you can definitely sell my house. And I'm like, you're darn right. I can. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's definitely, it's, it's, it definitely helps ease any kind of icebreaker that you got there. That foot in the door for sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, you know, kind of going back a little bit to your, uh, uh, your education, you have a law degree as well. And, yeah. you know, and tell me a little bit about what that was focused on and how that's helped your real estate career. So, you know, uh, I actually, uh, when I went to undergrad, I was a radio broadcasting major. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I had every intention of being the next, uh, you know, Dan Patrick or, you know, Bob Costas. And, you know, you learn quickly that a lot of those really glamorous positions are a lot harder to come by yeah. <laughs> than they appear to be. Um, so about halfway through undergrad, you know, people start asking, you know, what are you going to do with your life? You know, you're like, oh man, those questions I don't want to answer. So, um, you know, Law school for me was something I felt utilized my skill set, but also was a great way to pacify a lot of people questioning what my future was going to look like. And, you know, uh, law school kicked my butt, uh, you know, especially that first year. It was really um, all just so research oriented, so time consuming. And I, I had been in school for a while at that point, and I was definitely unprepared for, you know, what that would look like. And, you know, I kind of, got through it, gritted my teeth and, uh, you know, did better my second and third year of law school. But, you know, by that point I was kind of already knowing that wasn't probably my path, but I mean, again, just an educational experience, a way of training my thinking that, you know, will stick with me for the rest of the time. So I know it was a part of my journey for a reason, but mm -hmm. it wasn't expensive. <laughs> yeah. Part of my journey that, you know, I don't necessarily use a hundred percent practically, but definitely in a lot of ways. And I'm very thankful for that time in my life. Right. Absolutely. And, and, uh, you know, it said that it had a little bit of focus on negotiating and contract. It's got to help with what you're doing now is the, the negotiations, how contracts have changed and just different, uh, you know, the paperwork side of the business. Yeah. And just, you know, so much of dealing with critical thinking and human nature and, uh, yeah, negotiation, I think was one of three classes I got an A, a in, in law school. So <laughs> <laughs> an indicator that that was something I should be using in my life regardless. And uh, yeah, definitely something that, uh, again, yeah, such a core, important part of real estate and coming in as a younger person into real estate, you know, how do you show people that you have those abilities? And, you know, again, a, a law degree was something I leaned on early on to show credibility when I was, you know, a clean faced, uh, you know, 29 year old that didn't have a lot of experience with you know, real estate contracts. <laughs> right. Absolutely. When I think that's, you know, another really cool thing about real estate is that, um, you know, those, those skills that are learned from other careers or other, you know, times in your life, they're so, uh, you know, you're able to draw on so many of those. And, you know, I think a lot of people understand and respect, you know, those skill sets when it comes to the buying and selling of the, you know, their home. Yeah. In Wisconsin, I mean, you can get a real estate license as an 18 year old graduating high school. Doesn't mean you should. And doesn't mean I'd be sitting here today with the practice I have if that was the route I would have gone because yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't have been able to serve people and do what I do without the life experience I had. And I, people definitely know that and appreciate that. Right. So when you talk to uh, new agents joining, uh, you know, the team there and maybe they don't have that kind of experience, you know, the real estate experience, yeah. um, is that something that you, you kind of help coach them through is like, look, you have a lot of life experience, like draw on that. Like that's really sure. what's going to propel you forward. It, it, you know, I think like I did, you know, surrounding yourself with people who do have that expertise that you can draw from and lean on. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with being with a client and say, Hey, give me five minutes. I'll be right back. Let me ask you know, a few questions and coming back with that knowledge. And people are good with that. You know, they don't expect you to just be able to slam dunk answer every question they have on the spot, you know, and I, I think they would rather you take the time to really know what you're saying than just give half, you know, witted answers and not really have that what you're doing correctly. Right. Over, you know, over the 12 years that you've been in real estate, there have been, uh, you know, a lot of changes in the markets. We obviously, you know, 
global pandemic kind of crops up and like <laughs> totally changes everything. Uh, you know, how have you seen, uh, you know, your real estate approach? And you said, you know, you have to be willing to evolve. Uh, how have you seen your approach evolve throughout these changes? I think one thing I really love about the practice of real estate is you can never get too comfortable, you know, with what you've accomplished and what you're earning. I mean, you become the CEO of a company, you have a guaranteed, you know, hundred million dollar salary for you every year, no matter, you know, how many mistakes you make, you know, what, what you do, you know, in real estate, I could be the number one producer in my market. I start January 1st with nothing, you know, like zero every year. So I, I think I, never get too complacent with, you know, what I've done, never get too comfortable with what I've earned because I know I have to earn it every day or I, I don't have what I've become happy with and accustomed to. So I think it makes you really stay sharp with what you need to do every day to keep that level of production. And I, I think, you you know, it forces me to be ahead of the curve, you know, COVID happens and you're, you're like, yeah, I'm never going to sell real estate again. <laughs> I'm done, you know, and then you kind of hear it play out and okay, I can do this. I can do this. And you work through it. But yeah, there's a lot of points where you're like, man, this is over. This is, this is the end. And like, yeah. yeah, so it keeps you really mentally strong, I think. Right. And is that something uh, every year do you uh, or, you know, maybe even, you know, more frequently than that, do you really kind of uh, track you know, where your successes are coming from and how in the time that you're putting into certain, you know, marketing efforts or things that you're doing to see what is, uh, what is working now and maybe see how those trends are changing for the future. Definitely. I'm a Excel sheet junkie. So I have an Excel sheet that I've had every day I've been in real estate and I look at a lot of year over year trends, you know, two, three year over two, three year trends. Um, yeah, buyer side transactions, seller side transactions, month by month, you know, in an area like Wisconsin, you get a ton of questions from consumers like, why would I ever list a house in November? Houses in real, in Wisconsin don't sell in November. And I say, hey, actually, if I look at my year by year numbers, my fourth quarter numbers don't vary that much from my quarter two or quarter three numbers. There's a lot that happens every month of the year in real estate. And there's positives and negatives in every quarter. And be, again, you know, tracking data and keeping track of trends, it helps you speak educationally to consumers who they want to know, you know, those nuts and bolts of things. And they expect uh, an expert that they hired to kind of have some inside tips for them, not just, you know, what the news throws out every, you know, couple months or something, you know, they want real tangible nuggets. Right. Absolutely. And I, you know, I like what you just said there about, you know, using that data that you're uh, collecting, you know, to uh, track your own successes and where your time is going, but then to be able to show uh, your clients, you know, when they have questions like that, this is really, this is the way it's been working for me for right. so many years. And, uh, you know, I, I can definitely see how that uh, could help somebody that maybe is, you know, one of those people that's like, ah, oh, you know, I want to wait until maybe February or, yeah. you know, March to put my house on the market. And you say, hey, there's no reason that it tells me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so speaking about uh, your market, tell me um, a little bit, you know, about what makes it unique, where people are, you know, coming from, how things have changed over the past several years. Yeah. Um, one thing I love about practicing in the Midwest, I think it is a little bit more stable economically than you see in a lot of the coastal areas with the highs and the lows. And, you know, you live in uh, California and you love the highs and the highs, but man, when the lows go down, it's volatile. And, you know, we stay pretty stable. I mean, it's cool. And, you know, the 12 years I've been practicing, there's been pretty steady, probably 5% market growth almost every year I've been in real estate, which started from a really low place and kind of built up now. But, you know, um, residential housing here, you know, is in demand and uh, there's a, still a lot of people coming to our area and not enough existing housing inventory to satisfy everyone, which is great for homeowners owning properties and uh, great for future trends. And uh, I think it's going to be a healthy market for years to come. And uh, I, I, I'm very happy practicing within some very safe uh, parameters. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. As long and, as, you know, global, you know, pandemics or, you know, other right. things don't wipe us right. out in the meantime. <laughs> right. We don't need any other pandemic that we're not quite, you know, never heard of yet come no. popping up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, you know, and you mentioned earlier also about how, um, you know, when you got started, you know, really leaning on that buyer side of things was a big help, but maybe now it's a lot tougher for new folks to get, uh, to get in, um, a, you know, why do you think that is the way, you know, why do you think people struggle when the, you know, there's not 
you know, huge buyers, you know, that people are maybe not buying as frequently. Um, but then uh, B, what can they do to help kickstart their careers? For sure. Um, I think for me, what I see is, I think it's harder to establish yourself on the listing side, because I think people expect, um, you know, there's a lot more competition. You no, know, they, they want to go with a familiar name on the listing side. And I, I think when you're a buyer agent, there's a lot of opportunity with just new fresh faced people who are getting into housing for the first time. And they don't, you know, want to interview 10 different established agents in the market to determine who there's going to list their house. So I think the buying side is a really great way to get in the market. Unfortunately, now, you know, in a lot of situations, it's, you know, 10 offers on a, a house. So you might have some great buyer side connections, but getting them accepted offers is far from a given. You know, when I started, if I had 10 pre-approval letters, that was 10 guaranteed closings in the next two months, you know, and it was slam dunks. Now you have 10 pre-approved buyers, maybe a couple of them, you'll get accepted offers. A couple of them might sit in your queue for a year. And um, I, I just think it makes it a lot harder for those people without established credibility getting those initial transactions. But I think to your point, um, you just have to work harder to just cultivate those relationships. And maybe you're working with, you know, those 25 year old first time buyers and their parents see how hard you're working. And when the parents want to list their house, they say, Hey, you really busted your backside for my kid, Joe. Now I want to use you to list my house because you deserve, you know, that experience. And I think there's still a lot of ways. And I've seen it even, you know, a guy who's celebrating his one year anniversary in our office tomorrow did awesome business his first year in a really tough market for new agents. And it's because he put himself out there, um, was very, you know, aggressive and just cultivating those early relationships. And there's still opportunity every day in a market with as much residential housing as we have in the Metro Milwaukee area and a lot of other cities around the United States to have success really quickly. Yeah, absolutely. And I really, you know, I like what you said there uh, about, you know, you might be working with a buyer and, you know, you, if you're putting in the time and you're putting in the effort with them, even if they aren't, you know, anywhere close to being able to close on something, they have friends and family. And anytime the real estate conversation comes up, as long as you are constantly putting in that effort and showing them your value, your name's going to be the one they refer. Yeah, we live in the microwave society where people want instant results with everything they're doing. And so much of the best things that have happened in my practice are the seeds I sowed, you know, today that flourish in a completely unexpected area a year from now. But it's because I put it in the daily effort today and you just can't do things with the only result has to be, you know, success from what I did in this experience. And if you keep that mindset, it's very hard to have long term success, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Well, tell me about, you know, what your immediate future looks like, you know, what are your kind of plans for this year and then beyond that? Yeah. Um, you know, I am very, um, happy with, you know, the trajectory of what my business has gone. So I, it's really just continuing to see growth and see success, but, uh, you know, identifying the areas where maybe I do have lacking and a need, uh, you know, I, I had, a great interview yesterday with a possible uh, client care manager who, you know, could fill in a lot of the gaps that are missing. Uh, I have a great, you know, full-time buyer agent that works with me now that does a great job in the field. But, uh, you know, um, as a business person, you can never be just content with what you're doing now because that will just dissipate. So where, where can I increase things? What can I do better? How can I be more efficient? And, you know, that's where I, I'm definitely targeting as I look to continue to grow my business for the next 20 years. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think it's awesome. You know, you, yeah, you found that, uh, found that way to supplement some income and then boom, you know, <laughs> it turned into a whole new unexpected career. That's awesome. Man, in spite of myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I really do appreciate you taking the time to uh, talk with us today. Such a pleasure. Thank you so much. I want to thank Justin for joining us today. And I think it's awesome that he was able to turn his side hustle into a thriving career. So once again, if you think you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message at feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode. But remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.